Hello and welcome back to Movement Monastery. I'm Francesco and today we're going over stretching. Now I'm going to go through my maintenance routine here, but the main idea is that I want you to be able to take this and then do it in a more thorough manner. So everything that I'm going to be doing, I might only do one or two reps of it, but ideally you'd be doing about three or four based on the area you want to get better at stretching. So just remember that. Now as far as warm up prior to doing all this kind of stuff, you can also do some controlled articular rotations, which I'll have a link to prior to this. It takes about five to eight minutes to do that, and then we're going to do dynamic stretching after that. So let's get to that to start all right so dynamic stretching we're going to go ahead and just start with the arms big on circles as far around as you can get and i do about 10 of these in either direction i'm going to go the other way now two three four five six seven eight nine ten then i'm going to swing up and down two three four five six seven, eight, nine, ten. And all this is doing is swinging through a passive range of motion. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm gonna do one up and one down. And this ideally gets me, it's all, and this ideally is also used for when I'm doing like right before tricking or tumbling. I find that this method works the best to warm myself up. Now we're going to reach side to side. And this is pretty ingrained in me now. I almost always use this as warm up for my adult classes too. It's just really good for getting the upper body shoulders and twisting and rotating the trunk ready to move. And then we're going to go side to side over the top. I'm trying to do more of a side bend here. From there, we're gonna do a forward bend. Now you just bend to where you can bend. I'm actually pretty good at forward bending, so I'm gonna do some downward bounces here. I have my back knee bent, front leg straight, bouncing down. There's actually a full protocol to doing these downward, kind of more ballistic style bounces here. The other side, same thing. If you flex your foot, you'll get more of a stretch back here than if it's pointed, so I'd always flex it first. Okay, good. And then from there, I'm gonna go and start doing my legs. And then, and then from there, I'm gonna start going into my leg swings. So just starting out with going straight up, I'm gonna do about 10 of these, straight up in front of me. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Other side, you can see my Kapoweta hands coming out here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then from here, I'm gonna do outside crescents. And I can just do that back and forth. When I'm doing this, I'm not doing a super strainy stretch or kick. I'm just kind of loosely kicking the leg around. So I'm going here, outside crescent, as if I'm kicking over something. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, I'm probably gonna do a few more since I lost count there. But ideally you wanna do 10 on both sides. And if for you the kick is only this high, that's fine, all right? Take your time to kick up higher and higher. I can even kick higher once I get myself warmed up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go out to the side. I'm gonna face sideways so you can see this. So I'm gonna kick my foot straight up to the side here, but I'm only gonna go where my foot points. So if I stand here, lift my toes up, and turn my feet out, that's pretty much what I got as far as my turnout. Any farther than that would actually be forcing my turnout. So 
my natural turnout's here, so that means that I'm going to kick straight up into that line. This is where it's safe for me to kick. Okay. Five. And I have a little target up here for my hand to hit. A target always makes you do better. And the other side. Notice my other foot has turned out. A lot of people will turn their foot like that, and then it just becomes the front kick again. So make sure that you have the feet turned out. Very good. All right, so we did front, outside crest, and to the side. Now we're gonna do backward leg swings. And usually I use a chair for this, but I'm gonna use this right here. So I'm gonna swing my leg straight back. I'm gonna try not to turn my leg out too much when I do this, so it's really easy for when we kick back to turn our leg out because we're borrowing that external rotation. Just be aware of it if you're doing it. Not necessarily a bad thing, but just be aware of it. So, when I swing backward, going up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and then we're gonna do a side lift. So that is directly to the side. My feet are mostly parallel to each other. It's okay to turn the supporting foot out if I need to, but for the most part, I just wanna side lift straight to the side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other side from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what we're doing is really warming up all the hip muscles as we do this, right? All the way around. So we did our fronts, outside, side, and back. And now I'm gonna do some inside crescents to get the muscles from the inside in there. So from here, I'm gonna put a hand up for a target, and I step over one side to the other. starting to warm up now and I'm starting to get a lot more range so one thing that's always good about this method of warming up is that you're actually because you're moving the joints around you're actually you're actually creating synovial fluid which is a lot better for you to go get your flexibility from that than it is from just heating your body up by going into a hot environment that can be useful too but my body is actually prepping to move now there's a discrepancy between those two things, whether or not just adding heat to something immediately makes you more mobile and flexible. I don't know. I can go either way with it. I've been able to get out of a hot tub and go into the splits, and I've also been able to do a cold, but it's always about how you... I pretty much just gauge it how I feel at that moment. If I don't feel good, I don't do it. It's just like that. All right, we have those kicks all different directions. We did all of our arm swings. Now we're going to go into doing... Uh, our lunge and our split position. So we're actually going to start in a horse stance here. Feet are going to be together. You're going to bend your knees a little bit. Arms here for fun because it's a horse stance. I'm going to turn my heels up first. That's one, two, three, four, five. Usually five is pretty good. And from there, you're going to have to adjust based on your hip structure. But I'm going to come down as parallel to the ground as I can get. And from that position, I have to adjust, adjust here. From that position, I'm going to push my knees outward, so I feel the muscles in the back working. And I'm going into this horse stance position, which essentially is a split position, but standing, like a sumo squat. And you can play with where your hips are by pushing your knees forward and then backward. Forward, 
and backward. And we're just warming up those adductors and abductors. And back up. If you add a little bit of a weight here, you can also do that as well, just doing some squats in that position. That can also help you out with that. But we'll be doing weighted stretching on a different day. This is just with your body weight. So we did that one, now we're gonna go into a lunge. So now we're gonna come down here into as deep of a lunge as we can do, almost doing a front split in the process in that deep lunge. So we're trying to get our back knee to hover. We're gonna come here, and then we're gonna reach up. Or if you need to, you can put one hand for support, and then whatever leg is reaching back, reach up with that arm. You'll feel a nice stretch through here. A few breaths there. Very good, and turn to the other side, same thing. Coming down to that deep, deep, deep lunge as best you can. Back knee is hovering. Reach the arms up. Or if you need to, you can support here and breathe in. Good, now the next thing I want you to do is to rotate through that position. So you're gonna go from deep lunge through the horse stance to deep lunge, back and forth, okay? So let's go from deep lunge to a horse stance to the other side. And what you'll notice here, based on your hip structure, is that when you get through the middle, you're probably gonna have to change this a little bit based on your body's ability. Turn, other side, turn, other side. Now today, stretching is mostly about just your middle split, front split, and a little bit of bridging. But there's other positions we can get into as well that will help us out too. So just stay tuned for other ones. But this one's just mainly about your splits and a little bit of back bending and stuff. All right, so we're feeling pretty good there. Now we can start getting into the contract relax stuff, okay? So some of you might need a chair to put your hands on to do this next one. Because what you're going to do is you're going to walk your feet out as far as they can go, and then when you get to the farthest part you possibly can get to, when you're about at a six or a seven stretch out of a 10, 10 being passing out pain, the numbers are for discomfort. So when you get to about a six or a seven, you're going to contract your inner thighs if you're trying to pull your legs together underneath you as hard as possible. And then you're going to hold that for about five seconds. Then you're going to relax for about 10, try to go deeper into your stretch and try to breathe. And while you're doing that, you're going to push your hips forward. And then you're going to repeat the process several times. I usually recommend three times for beginners, five times for advanced, and longer holds for more advanced people. So, you come on out. Okay, so about here is pretty good. And now I'm going to squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to let myself go a little deeper. And again, I'm going to hold here for a little bit. Let myself relax into the stretch. This is also why having a chair is handy because you can put your hands on the chair, really let your legs relax as you're doing that. So I'm going to use the floor for now. The only problem with using the floor is that it doesn't keep you in the upright position which is ideally what you want to be stretching. I'm going to push back up again, and I'm going to try and push my hips forward and hold for one, two, three, four, five. Hands are down. I let my legs come out a little bit farther. Relax here for about 10 or so seconds. I'm going to do this one more time. One, two, three, Four, five, hands down. Let my feet go out a little bit more. And then walk your feet back in. As soon as you're able to control it with just your legs, walk them back in on their own all the way up. Now after you're done with this, I just want you to walk around a little bit so your hips calm down. You just put them through a ton of stress on the adductor. So just walk around a little bit until those hips get a little bit back to normal. Now 
Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go into front split work. So for this one, you don't need a whole lot of equipment, but I find it very useful to have these things when I'm doing this. So there we go. I have a foam roller. I have two yoga blocks and a mat for my foot behind. From here, I am going to put my foot on the mat back here. So I'm going to put the ball of my foot back here. You can also do the top of your foot if you want to. I'm going to do that today, actually. Now, if you need more, if you're not that flexible yet, you need something higher to put your hands on, you can use two chairs, no problem. Two hands down here. I am going to put my foot on top of the roller so that my foot can roll out in front of me, okay? Same thing here. I'm gonna try and keep my hips as squared off as possible. That means that they're not super turned out like that in the back, it's okay, but it's probably gonna happen a little bit just because when you get to those end ranges and you don't have control, that's what your body's gonna do. So from here, I'm gonna let myself come out. Okay, and then when I get to that end range there, I'm gonna hold and push down with my foot my legs, so I contract the muscles down here for five, four, three, two, one, and then I'm gonna back off a little bit. And I just back off a little bit to calm my hamstring down, and then I scoot forward again and go a little bit deeper. Okay, I get out there, I hold it for a little bit, I'm at a six, seven stretch, pain threshold, and then I'm going to contract down, two, three, four, Five. I'm going to back off a little bit here, and then I'm going to come forward again. You might start to feel the shakes, and that's all right, because we are focusing on our flexibility right now, and we're, in, we're very weak at these end ranges, so you might feel the shakes there, and that's okay. So from here, coming up forward again, I'm going to squeeze down, two, three, four, five, back off one more time. I'm going to go out and relax there a little bit before contracting, so come out there again. I'm going to relax here a little bit. And contract down, two, three, four, five, and back off. Okay, other leg, same thing. Okay, back foot's here. Roller, bring it out just a little bit farther. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and let myself come out. Okay, six, seven stretch. And then I'm gonna hold here a little bit. Kind of keep my hips in line as much as I can. Imagine two lasers shooting forward from your hips. Mine are a little off to the side right now, but imagine that. Contracting down, one, two, three, four, five, and then back off a little. And then I come forward again, as far as I can, six, seven, pain threshold, hold for about 10 seconds. And I'm working out the sweat doing this, okay? So keep that in mind. This can become quite a workout. And then I, I contract down, one, two, three, four, five. I back off a little and go back out again. Same thing, I hold it for a few seconds, about 10 seconds or so. And contract down, two, three, four, five, and back off. I'm gonna go one more time on the side and out. And contracting down, two, three, four, five and back on. Okay, so now after doing that, I'm gonna go into an active strengthening phase. So for my middle split, I am going to just try and lift my leg up to the side as high as possible and try to pulse my foot up high. So I'm holding on to something for support here. I'm gonna lift this leg up as high as it can go. I'm gonna try not to tilt too much forward to the side when I do it. Because uh, then I'm starting to use this leg. So I'm here. I'm just going to pulse up. Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep it as high as you can when you pulse. Other side, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next one is going to be with my foot turned out. So turning my foot out for support. Lift any other leg up, and you have two options. So from here, okay, I'm going to have my top leg bent, leaning forward over this one, and I'm going to extend my leg as high as it can get. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, oopsie, eight, nine, ten, and the other side. Bring my leg up, bend back, find my balance, lift up as high as I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other way of doing it is just having your leg bent into you like that and extending out like this. Okay, so there's just two different ways you can do that. Or you can keep your legs straight and just pulse it up like that. You can also have something to rest your foot on so you can hold it up at a higher angle and then pulse upward from there. So you have those two, and then the other one's going to be um, a needle stretch or a scale. So if you can't touch the floor, you can use both your hands on top of yoga blocks, but I'm gonna use the floor. So from here, I lift my leg up as high as it can go. And from there, I'm gonna pulse upward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other one is a leg bent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the other side. And while I'm doing that, I'm trying to keep my knee up as high as possible. That's what I should be thinking about is how high up my knee can get, because ultimately that's the joint that's closest to my hip, which I'm trying to use the most. So other side, from here, leg is up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bend leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And you get a nice hamstring stretch on the other leg when you're doing that. All right, so we did the Middle split, do the scale, and then there's a lot of other ones you can do with this, but we're gonna go back and do the stretch again real quick because we're running out of time for this second. So we'll keep this one just to doing our split training. So now we're gonna go through that contract. So now we're gonna go through the contract relax phase one more time. And then we're gonna do a relaxed phase after that. So contract, relax. Gonna go down as far as I can. Ooh, the floor is slippery. Ooh. You notice I'm a little bit deeper now. And I'm gonna contract the inner thighs. Two, three, four, five. I'm gonna relax down about 10 seconds. And again, one, two, three, four, five. And relax down. And one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Again, you can use a chair there. Take some weight off your legs if you're not ready to do the full body weight in that position. And walking it back up. <laughs> Under your own power if possible. Walk around for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this stretch again. And now this time, I'm not gonna use the yoga blocks. I'm just gonna use the floor, but you might still have to use the yoga blocks. So same thing here. Going here. 
Put the legs in front. My hands on either side. And I'm going to come down as far as I can. And from there, you can also use a furniture slider if you're on carpet instead of a foam roller underneath your heel. From here, I'm going to try and balance and squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. Back off a little. And go back forward into it again. Hold a little bit. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then contract. One, two, three, four, five. Back off a little. And back into it again. Hold it here. And contracting down. One, two, three, four, five. Back off a little and forward, and I'm going to relax here a little. Now, if I was to do this on flat ground without the elevated surface, I probably would be flat to the ground now. But that elevated surface of the foam roller is going to put more stress into my hamstring because I'm trying to load up that joint. All right, one more to go here. Too, but just very small, very small, okay? Especially if you're a super stiff person, it's pretty good. All right, now, coming up, one, two, three, four, five, back off, back down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, up, contract, one, two, three, four, five, back off a little, back into it, relax, try to breathe and relax. And here we go again. Two, three, four, five. So, I would do another round of the strengthening like I showed you earlier. So the leg is turned out. The leg, we're going to go straight up to the side. And then I'm going to do the extended position like I did before. And then I'll do the needle exercise where one leg is to the sky. So I go through all of that again. In my opinion, this is a great beginner way to start developing towards your splits. And then I recommend doing a pancake stretch at the very end if you have the ability to come down. And after all that, you actually should have improved your pancake stretch just because of the way that that stretch works. We just did. So going there, you can grab a hold of something in front. If you don't have the forward fold ability yet, you can grab a strap, throw it around a bar. You can grab a weight, a kettlebell, and pull yourself forward. You can have a friend with a mask on pull you down toward them. All right. But just relaxing down here. If I'm already pretty good, if I'm already pretty good at this position, what I like to do is put my hands behind my head and just let the weight of my upper body pull me down. Relaxing everything, I'm not even gonna point my feet, I'm just gonna relax. Take a few breaths here. should you do these for? For the passive stretches, if you want them to really have some lasting effect, I recommend a minute 30 all the way up to five minutes. And you need to figure out 
what kind of a person you are with that. If you're a 130 person, do that. If you're a five minute person, you have to do that. You have to decide where you are in your stretching journey based on your current ability. Um, also, all the strength work we're doing, like especially the contract relax work, I recommend, I recommend maybe twice a week, kind of like a strength protocol almost, like you're doing strength training twice a week, and see how your joints feel after that. If they feel okay, then you can maybe try to do a third one during the week, and if you're seeing progress that way. Don't forget to do the dynamic stuff in the beginning, and as always, this is something you would do toward the end of your training. So if you're doing tricky one day or acrobatics, do this at the end of your training, Unless you're doing like six hours worth of training, you can probably throw this somewhere inside there based on your training regimen. It's all about what you currently are able to do and how much volume you can handle. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please subscribe, um, comment down below, follow if you're on Instagram, and you all have a great day.